Hi, Shane here. You're watching Sam for God. And this is Mark. Check her out. So hi guys, um, I am not in London today, I am actually in Brussels in Belgium. I got here a few, few hours ago, I went to the hotel, and I'm only here for a couple of days, three days, and I thought, why not take you along with me, because I like to take you along with me on journeys and stuff. Um, I've always wanted to come here, um, and I'm here with my mum, but obviously she doesn't like to be on camera or anything, so it's just going to be me pretty much for the vlog, but yeah, it should be exciting. It's our first day here. We don't really know much about the town, but just from what we can see and stuff, it looks very nice, very pretty. I like all the green stuff here and the monuments and stuff. Um, there's like a there's a library there as well. Um, so the official language of Belgium, I wasn't actually sure before I got here. I thought it was French because they definitely do speak French here. A different version of French is like. The equivalent of like you know how like Austrian and German is different and English and American is different. That's the difference between the French of France and the French of Belgium. So that's good because I speak French, but um, oh, there's a random statue. Here. Um, I found there's another language as well, which is more like it sounds more like German, but it's like the official language and it's called Belgium. I don't know, actually, know. I'll look into it. It's very hot as well. It's funny what people do as soon as they spot like a really nice view, even if they don't know what it is. People just tend to get their selfie sticks out and cameras and just take loads of selfies. And I'm not gonna lie guys, I did the same just before. So I'm one of those people. People just like nice views apparently, whatever it might be. They don't, they don't even have to know what it is, the nice view. As long as it just looks nice and cool, people want pictures with it. artist who did like symbolism and surrealism and stuff like that, paintings of that kind, which I wouldn't know too much about because I don't draw I don't do any paintings. But um, I actually really enjoyed the, his art. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of art museums, no one wanted to come here, um, so there's a compromise. I wanted to go somewhere else, which we're going to go after this hopefully. But um, it was actually really interesting, he did some really cool stuff. I've decided I kind of really like that kind of, that technique of art, like symbolism and surrealism and yeah, he was, everybody that I look, it's, it's, it's very busy, there's a huge queue just to get in, um, so that was cool. So we finished up at the Chagall Museum, Mark Chagall, um, it was really good, I enjoyed it, we spent about an hour here, um, and we went to the gift shop as well, I'm just going to collect uh, her bag and our coats and stuff because we weren't allowed to take them in, but um, yeah, one, the, one thing I noticed in the gift shop is that everything, like all the books and stuff, like my mom, wanted to buy, my mom, my mom loves art basically, my mom's an artist, so she wanted to buy one of the books um, of Chagall, like uh, information books and stuff, but they only had it in either French or Flemish, which is the other language that they speak here. Uh, my mom doesn't really speak French that much, so that wasn't really an option, and obviously Flemish we don't speak, but they didn't have it in English at all, and I asked them, they were like, no, 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 no we don't have it, so... My mum ended up going for the French version, but um, it is a bit weird and strange that they don't do anything English. Like, even even all the signs and stuff. I mean, it's alright for me because I understand French and I speak French and stuff, but... Like, there's so many international people coming to visit Brussels and it's a bit weird that everything's just, like, mainly in French and um, Flemish. And, like, the third language is English. Okay, we're about to go to the Museum of Instruments now. Sounds right up my street. I'm really excited for this. Whoa. Hello. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, people just enjoy annoying me with my friends, strangers. There it is. That's my mum. So, um, we've just done something ridiculous, me and mum. Basically, this museum has 10 um, levels. And 
we were meant to be waiting for a lift to come, but it was taking a long time, and the museum closed in like an hour. So we were like, okay, why not just get the stairs? And as you can see, that's the lift. And it was very crowded as well. So we were like, okay, let's just get the stairs up. Ten levels up, we went, I don't like activity, you know this. And we couldn't find where to go. Like, literally every level was the same as this. There's nothing to see, and we were like, whoa. So, yeah, I don't want to be rude or mean or anything, but the staff here aren't very helpful at this museum. And nor were they very helpful at the other museum either, to be honest. But, um, yeah, we're, we're slowly finding out. I think we're on the fourth level now, going back down. A bit ridiculous, but oh well. So these are all just some pictures and architectural stuff that I don't really understand. Literally, guys, coming down from like the 10th floor to the 4th floor, 5th floor. And we still haven't seen anything that has to do with music or instruments. And I don't even know why we were given this. At least when I only had to pay two, two euros, which is good because I'm younger than 26. And here, apparently, if you're younger than 26, you get discounts for everything, which is good because I'm 24. Oh, look, we're on the fourth floor. Maybe we can find something interesting. Yep, the sax area. Oh, no, it's closed. Guys, this is ridiculous. Like, I was looking forward to this so much before I came here because I read such good things about this museum. But it's just a letdown. Honestly, I've not seen anything worth of interest so far. I don't understand it. I'm still holding this like an idiot. I have not used it even once. Still figuring out what I'm meant to actually be looking for. <laughs> I am currently laughing so much with my mum because we're both so disappointed. We just don't understand why we're here. Like, it was meant to be, I thought it was meant to be like, well, from what I read online, it was meant to be like this museum that showed different instruments and the history of them and stuff. Literally, all we've seen so far worth of interest is the gift shop, which has stupid things that we don't even didn't need to, have, need to come to Brussels to see, really. So my mum's just like, I think because we're so annoyed in a way, because we don't want to cry or get really upset. Instead, we're like laughing it off. I wish we at least hadn't been given these stupid earphones, like information stuff. We were given it for free. We didn't ask for them. We made them like, excited. I was like, oh, maybe it's something cool that we get to hear with this stuff, but nothing. Alright guys, so panic over. We're on the second floor now. We came down all the way from the 10th floor to the second floor and we finally found things that are kind of interesting. Like, I'm actually going to enjoy it for now because I didn't pay 2 euros and my mum didn't pay like 8 euros just to go to a gift shop. So, yeah, you can see some violins here and other forms of violins. And I'm actually going to stop vlogging and read them because I'm really interested in all that stuff. So, yeah, I honestly can't explain to you how tempted I am to just play right now, but it clearly says, do not touch. So, yeah, this is a hexagonal piano, which looks awesome. Like, seriously, look at it. I, I want to play it because I want to, like, hear what sound it makes, um, like how it's different to a normal piano. And here we've got an upright piano, which, again, looks awesome. Like... Oh my god, look, oh, I literally was about to touch it there, but, um, yeah, it looks really cool. It's got, like, this diagonal shape thing, and, yeah, I would love to have something like that in my house. So, oh, someone just played. So here we've got a harpy chord, which is, like, a piano, kind of, obviously not as big as a piano. Two levels, and you can see the harps here, which, again, this is just insane to me. I think that's so, so cool. Um, yeah, I think already I'm feeling a bit better about the whole situation because I've seen such some cool things and yeah, look at that. It's really long. Like I don't know if you can see it or not on camera, but um, I just there's something I really like about musical musical instruments in general. I find it so interesting that people can make music and sounds with so many different variations and with so many different kinds of things. Like obviously the um, violins and trumpets and. There's just so many different ways to make nice sounds and I think that's amazing that you can kind of, it's kind of showcased here in this museum. Guys, I've now figured out what the earphones do as well. They just randomly play music into your ear, wherever you go. So it's a bit too loud actually, I'm going to take it off. But um, yeah, this is the um, kind of brass section, the trumpets and the saxophones and the horns and the cellos and... Again, like, I think, 
I don't know what I find very fascinating about instruments in general is, again, like I said earlier, it's just how a small change in them, like a small change in the design of them, whether they're a bit bigger than some parts or smaller or thinner, can produce a completely different sound. And I think that's amazing. My brother plays uh, or used to play the saxophone. And I've never been into brass instruments much. I've always been a piano person and guitar, but um, I still find it very fascinating. Here we've got a um, square piano with a Turkish pedal, which I, again, oh my god, look how pretty that looks. The keys just look amazing. Wow, I wonder how much this actually costs to buy. Uh, in the evening, we have just come to the hotel restaurant to have some food. We're having some croquettes, I think is what my mum said. Is that what they're called, mum? Okay. And it's like cheese and stuff, it's like, it's like a starter thing. And then I got a steak on top of my meal. Very hungry, I haven't had lunch today, so it should be good. Mum got some kind of Belgian food, so yeah, it's a very nice place as well. I don't know what you can see. But yeah, I'm excited to eat. Amazing, really, really good. I'm so full now, though, so full up. But it was one of the best days I've ever had.
this back was really good guys um we weren't too impressed with the hotel when we first got here just because our room wasn't what we expected and stuff but um our meal last night at the restaurant was really good and the breakfast today was excellent so i had some um what did i have uh eggs scrambled eggs um as well as at the end afterwards that was going to be i thought that was going to be my only breakfast but then i went back and i saw some pancakes and I just had to get some pancakes as well and some waffles because Belgians are um, famous for that and that's my room so I'm going to go in there in a sec. Let's go. So hi guys, it's currently about 10 past 11 in the morning. Um, you probably can't even see me very well because of the light. But um, my mum's just gone downstairs to order a taxi or something. But this is like a quick room tour if you'd like to see it. Um, quite basic but nice comfortable beds um, and today this is where we're going we are going hopefully to where is it I think that's what it is mini Europe which I'd heard about about a year ago and it was one of the main reasons I wanted to come to Brussels because it's meant to be really cool so hopefully the weather will stay nice and yeah come along with me so we're about to go to mini Europe now it's over there somewhere but behind me I don't know how we can see it's a massive thing that looks really cool and it's like quite a big symbol of uh, Brussels, I've seen it in pictures and stuff. And it's called the Atomium or something like that and you can actually go up, there's like stairs, you can go to like the, f the first two walls over there <laughs> if you want to. I don't think we're going to do that because it's not really... I don't know, it looks very cool though. So Mini Europe, I'm very excited for it. It's basically what it says in the title basically, it's in front of me over there. So yeah, it's just, um, it's meant to be a Mini Europe, a mini version of Europe. and. From what I've seen on the website and stuff, um, on their website they've got like all the big landmarks from all the big uh, capitals of um, Europe, capital cities, and they're all like there in the same park, in the same area, just a bit smaller than normal, obviously. It's like the Eiffel Tower's going to be there, Big Ben's going to be there. So yeah, it's just apparently it's meant to be one of the most visited parks in the world as well, or at least in Europe. So, let me find my mum, I think she's going to get tickets, but um, yeah, I'm very excited for this. Just said hi to that orange turtle behind me. That was really fun. It was very um, touchy feely. So, I mean, already you can see some of the big iconic things of different European cities. Like, you've got Big Ben over there, which looks very cute. I see it pretty much every day when I live in London. Well, I, live in, I do live in London, so I, see, I do see it every day. Um, and there's the Eiffel Tower, which is very big. Um, and I'm sure there's other things as well around. I'm, I think the, the, the Pisa Tower is somewhere. So. Um, yeah, I'm excited to go and explore and see everything from up close and stuff. It's cute, it's just like a cute little park that we've made. Um, to be honest, what I really want to do, although not today because it's a bit, it's not too hot, not too warm, but that slide over there is like a water park right next to this park that we're in. And I didn't know, that, I didn't know about this water park, otherwise I would have brought like my swimming costume and stuff like that, so I could have actually gone to the water park but it doesn't matter anyway because I'm going to Florida next month and I'm going to be by the sea and by the water the whole time so yeah. So um, here we've got Denmark, um, shout out to my ex-colleague Anne-Marie who's Danish. Yeah she's got a nice little houses and stuff and it's cute the boats and over here, it's quite busy but I'm going to try and show you, over there is a Stockholm in Sweden which uh, I went to around this time last year with my friend Priya which is really cool, one of my favourite cities in Europe I'd say probably. So um, I'm just stood in front of Finland and <laughs> something hilarious happened. I came here because I was like looking at this stuff and then my mum was just like staring at this woman over there, this lady. I don't know if you can see her and let me zoom on her. She's just come out of a sauna and every now and again she goes down <laughs> to have a little swim. And I was like, Mum, what, what are you doing? Why are you just standing here? And she told me about it. And we like literally stood there together for like a few minutes just waiting for it to happen. And when it did, when it, did it was worth it. It was hilarious. So, And there's a boat over there as well. So I'll show you the footage of her going swimming in a sec. So 
So um, behind me at the moment, you can see the cute, colourful houses of Copenhagen in Denmark, which I went to at March of 2014 with my mum. Um, I don't know, I just really love going to random different European cities. Uh, one of my dreams is to go to every single city or country at least in Europe. And it was really good, I really enjoyed Copenhagen. One of, I, not one of my favourite cities in um, Europe, but it was really cool, I enjoyed it. So over there we've got Riga, which is um, the Monument of Freedom in Latvia. And I really like how all the people are just kind of surrounded over there. The detail in it is really cute, like... Yeah. I don't know how well you can see it. And also my mum pointed this out as well. The crossroads here is really funny, you can see the ants just kind of walking by. Obviously that's not done on purpose, but it's just kind of what happened. So over here, this grand big thing is actually a university. It's for the University of Vilnius, 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 yeah, and it's in Lithuania, which is awesome. Like, I thought it was like a historical thing. <laughs> Look at all the small chairs and everything in the benches. But yeah, it's actually a university, so that's pretty cool. I love the daisies as well. I like daisies, they're my favourite flowers. So over there, currently at the moment, I'm introduce you first. We're in the Netherlands, Holland. That's uh, Maastricht over there. It looks very cool. Um, over here we've got, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it well, but it's the Hernsbrook or something. Again, looks pretty awesome. The Atomium is just over there behind it as well. The weather's going to be really nice now, which is good. So um, right here we've got Belgium, which is what we are in right now. Um, so yeah, just different things in Belgium. I wouldn't know the names of them, which isn't very good, but it's okay. You've got like a bus stop thing going on over there with mini tiny little people. And I really like the trees as well, look, like, obviously someone has, like, planted these things that, that you know, for them to look like small trees that would go well with the general vibe of the place, of looking tiny and stuff. And we've got cars here, and a boat, and I re I'm not really sure what this is, but <laughs> it's making a sound. It looks pretty cool, though. Um, there's a crow over there, you can't see him. Um, yeah. So um, behind me, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's the Grand Place, which is actually in Brussels, in Belgium, which is where we are right now. We've seen this, we saw it yesterday. It kind of looks like Stefan's Dome in Vienna, the top of it anyway. But we're hopefully going to go and see it properly, like the actual version of it later on today or tomorrow or something. But that's a very important building. Tiny little people there again, look at them. Just look at them. It's like Lego, but not really Lego. And there's a mum over there taking pictures. <laughs> and there's the Eiffel Tower, which you're going to get to in a sec. So guys, McFly have hit a new low. Hardly anyone's going to watch their latest concert, look. They look all sad, like look at Dougie and, and Harry over there. They're just like, why isn't anyone coming to see us? Look, it's empty. That's ridiculous, guys. Why have the fandom done that to them? I'm, I'm ashamed of you guys. Guys, my mate Big Ben's just behind me. I lied to you when I said I came to Brussels, Belgium. I'm actually still in London. I just wanted to pretend that I've gone on holiday and stuff. I know, it's really sad. Look at it, though. It looks really cool. It's actually like quite, you know, decent. Very alike, the actual thing. I don't know, look. I wish you could like see the difference between like the actual, like it's quite small, it's obviously taller than me, the clock. But um, I don't know, it's, it's awesome. I like it. Is this making me feel homesick? No, because <laughs> I don't even have a home. I'm a third culture kid, I don't have a home. If you haven't watched my 50 Facts About Me video, go and watch it then and you understand what I mean by that. But yeah, it's pretty cool. And who knew that London was so close to Paris? Let's go to Paris and go to Disneyland. So guys, I know I said the weather's got a bit better now and the sun's out and stuff, but I don't think it's still sunny enough for people to actually go and sunbathe. What? There's just random people sunbathing over there. Look at that. Oh my God. And over there as well, just casually loving life. I mean, uh, what? <laughs> yep, typical island over there. Oh wait. I do love Ireland by the way, in case that wasn't clear enough. Ireland's probably one of my favourite countries in the world. Not just because of Westlife, I genuinely just love Ireland and the accent and everything. But yeah. Oh come on Austria.
Guys, in one day I've been to London, Bath, Dover, and that's Dover Castle over there, and now I'm off to France. I should travel more. Who knew technology had advanced so much that I could just go to all these places in like an hour? That's crazy, guys. I'm just walking past the Eiffel Tower now. Casual, yeah. And it's just like uh, two minutes ago I was in London, so crazy, guys. I've, my mind is blown. So behind me, you can see the Sacre Coeur, which you can actually, if you've been to Paris, you probably would have seen it because you can see it from the Champs Elysees, which is one of the most famous kind of streets of Paris, shopping streets areas. And it looks really cool. I really like it. I don't know how well you can see it because of the sun, but if I press that, they're gonna start moving. Look at that. Don't start moving. <laughs> no, do start moving. Please, don't stop moving. That's pretty cool. And there's people just waiting for them down there, waiting to go up and to the Sacre Coeur. Continuing on to our journey, we're off to Italy now. As you can see here, that's the population of it, that's the euro currency, and that's the year they joined the European Union. And you can see the Pisa Tower over there, which is a thing that I really want to go and visit, like a proper one, at some point soon. Like, I want to go to Rome as well, I like, guess just I've always wanted to go, so that's going to be something that I can maybe hopefully do either this year or next year, hopefully. And that, like I said earlier, that kind of water park thing. Oh my god, it just I can see people in it now, and it's just it's got me really excited for Florida. I really want to go on that as well, but I haven't got anything to wear, I didn't bring anything, like I can't just go like this. So that's a bit of a shame. It does look cool though, but I love water parks, I love water rides, so I, I can't wait for like Florida and stuff, yeah. That's the pizza tower over there, it's about to fall. Come on, don't fall, come on. And now we're in Venice, as you can probably tell by the boats, they're so cute. I went to Venice when I was 15 or something, um, 2005 or 2006 I think it might have been. And yeah, we only went for like a couple of days, but it was, it was really good. But I feel like I never appreciated it enough at the time, because I was a teenager and it was like, all I wanted to do was go to England. I was living in Vienna at the time, I wanted to go to London on holiday or like Disneyland or something. But, I mean, it was cool. Um, I did enjoy it a lot. They had some really cool stuff there, so yeah. So, um, I'm just at the airport now, I'm waiting to board my flight to Florida. I'm going early. There's Air France here, as you can see. We've got Brussels Airlines over there, Turkish Airlines over there, there's Virgin Express over there. Can't find British Airways, though. It's not, it's not here, so I don't know how I'm going to get to Florida, because that's the flight I'm taking. Um, random fact for you, the flight, the kind of airline that I've been on the most is probably either Austrian Airlines or Swiss Air. When that was a thing, it's not a thing anymore, I don't think. But yeah, Austrian Airlines, Swiss Air, and um, Lufthansa as well. I've been on that a lot because, you know, because of where I used to live and stuff. I used to travel with those airlines a lot. I don't know if you care or not. Just thought I'd share this random stupid fact with you. So um, we finally made it to Austria. The country of my my passport country, basically the country in which I spent I've spent loads of time in three years of living there and just loads of time visiting family, friends and family and relatives there. That's not Vienna though, which is where I where I used to live and stuff. This is a Melk, which is the first capital of Austria. Like that's what the first capital was when Austria first became a country, I guess. And that's like a cute big abbey, very iconic. I've never been to Melk. I've only ever been to Vienna in Austria, weirdly enough, but um, looks very nice. And yeah, it's it's a cool place, Austria. I do have the Whoa! Okay, we've got a random like spaceship going up there right like now. I don't really know what that has to do with anything, I've just to be honest, but I'll have a look later and tell you. There you go guys, that's Athens over here, one of the other cities in the world that I've always wanted to go to and hopefully someday I will. I think what this experience has taught taught me is I really need to go travelling more. Because I love travelling. Especially like different European countries. I don't know why, why, but I've always been interested in like discovering and exploring Europe as a continent rather than going to different continents. I mean, I'd love to do that as well, but it would just be cool to, I don't know, go to... Because I think Europe has so much to offer. Like It's such a historic place in general compared to, say, America, which is such a new continent, a new country. But um, Europe has so many different places, and I think this mini Europe here in Brussels really showed you that. Like, I think that's why it's probably a very, very good place to come and visit. I completely recommend it. We're nearing the end of our visit here, but um, yeah, it was, it's was it been fun. I think it's probably my favourite thing I've done so far in Brussels. No. And I can't wait to go and see some of these places for real. Some of them I've already seen, but I'd love to see the, the other ones I haven't seen yet. Guys, even in Belgium you can find some Disney love. Look at these bags. They're really good actually. I'd, I'd be tempted to buy them because they're like really big and spacious and they've got a zip as well. I like bags with zips, like the one I currently have here. But um, they're very cute. 
just thought I'd show you them because I know a lot of people that watch my channel are like Disney fans and stuff. So yeah. So we just stopped here to have a bit of lunch. It's about four o'clock at the moment, or three o'clock. And I've got this little thing here and loads of mayonnaise because I love that. And um, what's good about Brussels in my opinion is that they give you a lot of mayonnaise because they actually enjoy it themselves. My mum's having that as well and she's enjoying it. <laughs> so guys, it's a significant amount of time later now. Um, it's 8 o'clock in the evening and that's a really cool shop over here. You've got all the puppets and stuff and marionettes. That's cool. I'd love to play with these. It's closed now though. Anyway, we're in a place called the Galerie de la Reine. Um, We've got some Mickey stuff here, some Disney stuff, sorry. Okay, I keep coughing because I get excited by Disney stuff anyway. Um, so yeah, we uh, went back to the hotel after that lunch, late lunch thing, um, and slept for a couple of hours because it was comfortable and I was really tired and stuff. We were both really tired in my mom. And then, yeah, we just decided to kind of walk around the hotel for a bit, which is what we're doing right now. Um, we had some waffles earlier as well. My mom was calling me, what she's seen. Um, yeah, we had some waffles uh, earlier, which wasn't very nice actually, not the best place we could have gone to. But it was pretty good, and now we're just walking and just enjoying Brussels for what it is. And there's some chocolates here that my mum has found. <laughs> that looks really cool. <laughs> my mum's just gasping like, oh my god. But it's close, so like, we're going to have to come back either tomorrow, we'll just forget about it, unfortunately. So we're walking this little alleyway with loads of restaurants all around us. And we keep getting that stop. I was like, please come to our restaurant. But yeah, everyone's like, come to our restaurant. It literally reminds me of like Brick Lane in London or something. It's crazy. We had to spend about five minutes trying to like convince a guy that we'd already eaten and we didn't want to go to his restaurant. He was like, come on, come on. It'll be like 18 euros for everything, three courses, free house and the free drink on the house. And stuff. I was like, yep, stars were just very full at the moment. But yeah. I thought I'd show you it. It's quite cute though. It's quite a cute little area. And I love that it's like nearly 9 o'clock now. It's 8.30 p.m. maybe even later than that. And it's still very light. I love that. Hey, I just love the whole kind of lightness of the summer. So now we're in this area which looks very similar to Kertne Strasse in Vienna, Austria. Um, literally, if you look at it, if you've been to Vienna, you'd probably kind of know what I'm just talking about. But in that in particular, this is the grand place I think that's what it's called. That looks a lot like the Chef and Dome in Kettler Strasse. Um, I might, if I can, insert a picture of both together right now. So then you can see how similar they look. But um, it's cool, I really like this area. Everything's really pretty, look. I wish like, I don't know. I feel like, I always feel like I need to like, actually do my research and learn about all these things I see when I go on holiday because what's the point? Like that's very nice obviously, it's very pretty and stuff, so is that, so is the grand place. But it doesn't make any sense if you don't actually know anything about it, so I'm going to have to look it up later tonight when I've got internet and stuff. So one thing I've been seeing a lot on like touristy cards and stuff and touristy shops in Brussels is a statue of this random kid who's like peeing. And so today I was like very curious and I googled it to see like what the statue was and I was determined to go and find the statue. That's the statue over there, and you can see there's people like excitedly taking pictures with it. I think that's ridiculous. I think that's hilarious. Like, I expected the statue to be like a lot bigger than this random little statue over there just peeing. Let me zoom on him. Let me zoom on the peeing dude. It's actually called the Mannequin Piss, which I think is a hilarious name. But um, yeah, they've got like they've got them everywhere. Like they've got fake ones, fake ones of that kid, that kid uh, peeing, weeing kid everywhere around town. But obviously that's the real one. They've got bigger ones. Like uh, it's just, I just love life. I love people. And whoever thought of making that statue and making it like a big and famous part of Brussels, like just amazing. Good morning, guys. So it's our third day here in Brussels. Um, it's currently about twelve o'clock. We just checked out the hotel and stuff, and we are now off to the museum area of Brussels, where we kind of went on the first day as well. I oh, wants to go and check out the Magritte Museum. He's like another artist, um, painting kind of person, um, which I find interesting. Like my mum really likes that kind of stuff, but I, I'm obviously not into art that much, like drawings and paintings and stuff. But I kind of still like going just because I see stuff. Even though I do find some of them kind of boring, but yeah. And after that, I think I might go and check out some of the shopping areas of Brussels, the other side, because they've got some cool stuff. Tintin, the character. The cartoon, I don't know if you know him or not, but like, I used to read all his books when I was younger. He's Belgium, Bel from Belgium, I didn't know that. I knew he was French, so I thought, like French speaking, so I thought he was made by either France, someone in France, or someone in Switzerland, or Belgium, but it happens that it's uh, still in Belgium, so yeah, let's go to the museum, shall we?
Because now you guys would have just seen would have been such a short clips of the gift shop of the Marguerite Museum because when I was about to go in, like the guy was like, you can't take any pictures, so I just thought I might as well listen to him, even though I'm pretty sure it was allowed, but oh well, I decided to just be safe. Um, now we're going to this stiff other museum, which is kind of connected to this, because I want to see this other artist, but look at this. I've seen this, and I've, I found it really interesting. Basically, on top it says, Le mot et les images, which means words and images, the words and images, and it basically kind of, I haven't read through the whole thing, but I've read through the first bit. I took a picture of it because I want to read it later. Um, but it's really cool because it's just showing how some words, how they connect with the pictures, their pictures and what they are, what they're meant to represent. For instance, this one, ciel, that means sky. It's just kind of saying sometimes that even like sounds like the sky or looks like the sky or some words just kind of, I don't know, it's just really interesting. And I think I'm finding this interesting more just because I like writing and I like words and I like different languages and stuff. So for me, that is incredible. So my mum's just gone to... Um, get tickets for the next museum and I'm just kind of like looking at this, reading it through. But I really enjoyed McGree's stuff as well. Um, I didn't realise how famous he was. If you would have seen some of his pictures that I showed in the previous clips, you would have probably recognised some of them, like the ones of like a guy with an apple on his head, uh, and, and, you know, covering his face and just kind of, you know, there's some stuff over there as well, I don't know if you can see it or not. But they are very, very famous. Um, and um, yeah, I don't know, I think... I think, especially for someone like me who doesn't normally like art, it was, it was different because it was surrealism. And I like the fact that they put different kinds of things, as you can see here, like with the line and stuff. It just makes it look really cool, and I like that. So we are currently in a lift, just going up casually, sitting here. This is an actual lift. It's chilling. I don't even want to get out now. So let me Like I said, in Brussels, it's currently about 10 to 6 in the evening, and we've just been kind of, you know, we've just been hanging out here in this like lounge area, but we're about to go soon to the Eurostar um, station in Brussels to get the Eurostar train back to London tonight, uh, which is weird, like, this is the first time I got a Eurostar to anywhere apart from Paris, because normally it's either been Paris or Disneyland. But it was cool to be able to get it to come to Brussels as well. I love the Eurostar. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little vlog. Well, it wasn't really little. Quite a long vlog. But I hope you enjoyed watching it anyway. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, give it a like if you enjoyed it. Thumbs up. And, yeah, um, I hope to do more videos like this. Next vlog's going to be Florida. So, yeah. Okay, guys. See you next time. Bye.